So this, this is the all new Hyundai Exter and it's Hyundai's answer to a new entry level SUV segment. It's got the footprint of a hatchback, but it's got the utility of an SUV. And so if you're not ready to make that jump into a Creta or a venue, then this is definitely it. It's got a 1.2 liter Kappa engine, which can produce about 114 Newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. And mileage wise, because it's a pretty frugal little engine, it can give anywhere between 13 to 15 kilometers per liter in the city and even more on the highway. And it's built on the Grand i10 NEOS platform, so there's good legroom but because of its taller body it's got even better headroom and the best thing about this car though is at the back it's got 391 liters of storage space which is a lot for this size of a car and so without further ado let's let me get in the driver's seat and let's go for a drive say that it's a pretty smooth and refined driving experience. It's got a manual gearbox, but it's got, I feel like it's got shorter ratios for shifting gears. And as a result, it's all just very quick throws for like changing gears in the city, which is exactly what you need to do when you're navigating through traffic. That 1.2 liter engine that Hyundai have made for this car. It's a bit slow on the initial pickup, but once you cross about 2,500 to 3,000 RPM, it comes alive, like now. And then there's like a decent amount of pickup in the car for like zippy quick overtakes. I also want to quickly add on the feel of the brake. Well, it's got disc brakes at the front, drum brakes at the back, and while that may in paper not sound the best, it is more than adequate for what this car was made to do. So something I absolutely loved because of this smooth gearbox is like downshifting and rev matching. It's so smooth just how the gear and the clutch all fall in place on this car. I also felt that the steering wheel is on the lighter side definitely. <laughs> like. It's quite nimble that you can navigate, just swerve around in city traffic when you're in tighter areas, but it does have a bit of a weight to it. And so you definitely do feel like it'll give you some confidence when it comes to like taking turns in higher speeds. I also really like the suspension on the system. You know, our roads have like the occasional potholes, uneven, smoothening gravel roads too sometimes and this car does a pretty good job of soaking all of that in like it really won't make much of a difference I know it's a car with a bit of a taller center of gravity because of that taller body stance again it's coupled with 185 millimeters of ground clearance so I definitely feel that this car can easily do city driving, but I feel like it can also do a decent amount of like rough road driving. And by rough road driving, I mean not, I'll preface it, I won't say this car can do off road driving, like that's a very different segment of car. But rough road driving where there's no gravel, where there's no pitch, where there's like unevenness on the road, I think this car is more than capable for such handling on such terrain. And in addition to that 185 mm ground clearance, I also think that I think what 
I noticed about this car with the lips on the car at the front and at the back, they're very like, the wheels are right next to the bumper. And so the approach and departure angle, I feel, should be pretty adequate on this car. Like, I feel like it can tackle most rough roads quite easily. And I think, best of all, the cherry on top of this car is that I don't know how everyone positions their seat, but I typically try to do it in a way such that my driving height is at maximum and then I figure everything out like my recline angle, my steering reach and stuff. And for such a tall car again, it's got such a high level of seating position, like I really feel like I'm in command and the visibility is great out here. I can definitely see where the front of the bonnet is, like where the sides are, where my car is pointed towards and where it's heading. And yeah, it just makes maneuvering tight spaces in city traffic so much more manageable. So let's talk about the exteriors on the Hyundai Exter. And straight off the bat from this front three quarters angle, it just definitely looks like a mini Santa Fe, the new 2024 version to me. Like, <laughs> I, I can't even <laughs> not make the comparison. So starting from the front, you have a very boxy design and it's gone throughout the car. The LEDs on this car are H-shaped, just like the Santa Fe. You have your headlights down here. You have a parametric piano black sort of radiator grille. And something that's quite new on this car also to hook is that the model name actually has a badge in front. Exter, you usually just see a car company badge at the front but hey i guess this is what hyundai have started to move forward with also the badge i feel like the badge has grown in size compared to other hyundai models i guess that's their new design language and again some of these cut lines have started at the front coming over to the side you have a bit of a flared arch here and at the back too but the wheels themselves are 15 inch or 14 inch rims or wheel caps depending on the trim of the exter and moving across you have automatic mirrors you have a bit of a dual tone going on here with like a bit of black plastic cladding on the top and bottom and you have a sunroof and really tall roof rails like really adds to the whole tall road presence of the car and then starting from about here you have all these angular lines cut starting from the front all the way to the rear passenger door and through the back and coming to the back though this is something that hasn't grown on me just yet the C pillar here is a bit on the bulkier side and you'll see why that there is a large C pillar from the back. It's to give that very broad sort of rear view design, but uh, it'll probably take some time to grow on me. Again, you have Santa Fe like H rear lights here a bit of badging again this is a pretty large hyundai badge at the back a rear camera parking sensors another piano black tile you do not have a rear window wiper though that's a bit weird but you do have a rear spoiler with a tail light and a shark fin antenna on top as for the boot on this car, it is a massive 391 liters. You have a bit of a privacy board in the middle that you can take out. It's got a big lip, like almost up to my forearms here. 
The one thing though that I think was a miss by Hyundai on this car is that the rear seat can be folded down for an even bigger storage space, but it's a one piece rear seat. We're all used to that 60 40 ratio split at the back seat, but this is just a one piece seat. However, with the rear seats folded down, you have ginormous space wow. at the back that most hatchbacks can't even imagine of giving. And underneath the rear floor bed, you do have a 14 inch spare wheel. So the interiors on the Exter is a very familiar Hyundai interior. Like there's a lot of buttons, dials, knobs around the car and it comes with an 8 inch infotainment and a digital driver's display. The 8 inch infotainment does support wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and everything is just in reach from the driver's seat. This car is built on the K1 platform from Hyundai. So you have cars like the Hyundai Exter, the newer generation Sancho's, the Hyundai Auras, and also the Hyundai Casper, which is similar to the Exter, but it's only available in markets abroad. Maybe Nepal might have it someday. There is a sunroof. And something really great about the interiors of this car is the space in the back seat because of that tall body stance. Like you have headroom and really good knee room. So starting with the driver's seat, it's hard plastics mainly in this car, but there is a bit of a print on some of the hard plastic. Your child lock here and your window controls are here. This is a one touch window but just for the driver's seat and just to go down for some reason not for up your auto lock your mirror controls are all here and you have a pretty large size boppy holder as well as more storage space on the right hand side you have your traction control settings that can be turned off or on and your headlight angle can be adjusted from this here it's a pretty circular design AC vents on the exterior and as for the driver's seat you have a height adjustment for the steering column and as for the seat you can change the angle as well as the height of the seat and the reach of the seat. As for buttons on the steering wheel this is a 4.2 MID digital display. I'll cover the infotainment and the driver's display in a separate video. But just going over the buttons on the seat, on the left hand side you have most of your media controls, volume buttons, your track selection, a favorite button, and on the right are your cruise control and toggle buttons for basically going through the menu like on the driver's display. On the left hand side, you have your wipers, you have the speed of your wipers, and on the right hand side you have your headlight controls, your parking light, your headlight, as well as your indicators. A one touch is just a couple of indications, or you could leave the indication on like that. Your hazard lights, like in most cars, are in the middle. And coming to the center of the car, you do have two cup holders. One is actually on the smaller side and one is on the bigger side. You have another, it looks like a cubby for your wallet or even the key. Your handbrake is here. Your manual gear lever is here. And coming onto the buttons, you have the fan speed on the left hand side with your AC on and off. This is your air circulation button where your air wants the direction of your air, foot or at the top or at you, your front and rear defrosters and then an off AC button. Also you have an auto AC button in case you want to just let the car control it but I prefer to like leave it. Also this is your temperature dial so depending on where it's all very intuitive and reachable 
AC vents in the middle, 8 inch infotainment system in the middle, and now onto the passenger seat. More hard plastics, a cubby here, windows, your lock, your door handle, another bottle holder down here, and this pair, this glossy black design. If you've like seen my Tidal Nexon video, it's got a very similar tri arrow design here. Your glove box is pretty deep, it's filled with my camera gear and things at the moment. You do have two USB-A and a USB-C socket here. This one is used for Apple CarPlay and a 12 volt or 120 watt socket in the middle. Like spacious, quite spacious on the side. Then coming to the top, you have your sun visors with a mirror here. It's under plastic at the moment, but you can take out the sun visor, but there is no extension on it. And then you have a sunroof it's not the biggest sunroof but it definitely does do the job keep it closed for now your driver's seat does not have a mirror but it does have something that you can like put in valuable information cards on this is your interior lights and closing your sunshade would be like this you do have a mirror with a coating of anti-glare but to turn that on there is a flick at the back and coming to the rear cabin space on this car i think this is where most of that k1 platform magic is going on like immediately getting onto it again it's the same frame body size as a grand i10 neos but there is a bit of a scooped seat at the back with a decent sized pocket which adds for leg room your rear occupants do get two ac vents that can be turned on and off and then there is another 120 watt 12 volt socket down there in case anyone wants to plug in a charger also to be noted on this car is the fact that the rear seat i've noticed sits on a bit of a slanted inclination and as a result it just makes you feel like you have more room and you're more like comfortably laid back in the back seat your rear seats do get isofix points at the back in case a baby seat is to be attached on both sides of the car and again <laughs> the back seat is i think where hyundai did a bit of cost cutting in terms of keeping things under a certain budget you have a headrest for two occupants but not the center occupants but what's most interesting to me is that there's actually one two and three there's actually three seat belts like one seat belt is for your center passenger so i don't know why they did that <laughs> footwell room is also pretty nice and headroom is just magnificent. It's really, really spacious at the back seat of this car. And I'm just surprised by how spacious it feels given its average hatchback size. So after about a day's worth of driving and testing the ins and outs of this car, the Hyundai Exter, I can tell that overall it's quite a good package. Like, suspension is pretty decent, soft, plush, good job of dampening all these unevenness on the road, seating positions high, boot space on the car is phenomenal, like 391 liters on a car this size. Same size as a Grand i10 Neos, by the way, like, I can't stop telling myself that pickup and acceleration and just handling is so smooth you're not really meant to push this car but like a downshift is just so smooth like there was no jerk nothing i yes i was rev matching but it just feels so elegant and like nice to like shift the gear because it's got such a short throw on it and also something that really stood out to me on this car was the ac like fans speed 
one and like AC lowest that's enough like it's 25 26 almost 27 degrees outside depending on where I am and that's enough to like cool the cabin inside on top of that even with the AC on there is enough of like torque and pick up on this car that you don't feel any power lag my concluding <laughs> thoughts on this that is that it's very well balanced this car and it's like super easy to work with city or highway like <laughs> very easy anyway if you like this review or have any questions or comments on this car feel free to drop a comment down below and i'll see you on the next one